Hey, this is Jamie with Stillmeyer Games, and today I'm going to talk about my favorite mechanism in the large group deduction bluffing game, Blood on the Clock Tower. I was invited to join a, uh, an online Discord version of this game um, by Gnarly Carly Games on Instagram. I'll link to her below. Um, and I joined yesterday for about a two-hour session. It took a little while to play. Um, a lot longer than I would normally play a game of this of this ilk, but I was really interested in, in seeing how the game played. And it turns out there are a lot of interesting mechanisms in this game. And I think I, I haven't played this type of game in a while because of the pandemic and quarantine and whatnot. And so it was, it was fun to, to play this style of large group deduction game. So in Blood on the Clock Tower, you are every play, it's kind of a mafia werewolf style game where every player has uh, a secret role and every round... You, you kind of talk amongst yourselves. You can split out into little groups, which I thought was great, especially on Discord. You can split off into a private room, basically, for a few minutes and talk with someone else if they want to talk, if they want to share information, whether or not they're telling the truth. And then you can go back to the town square and talk to everyone else who's there. Um, I really like that. As an introvert, it was very helpful for me to be able to break out and talk with uh, one or two other people instead of trying to talk to 13, or not 13, 11 other people all at the same time. Um, and then at night, you end up voting on people that you want to, to it's somewhat morbid, but you know, it's just a game. You're, you, you are voting on someone to kill, someone who you think is a demon. Um, and if, that, if there's enough vote, votes, that person is killed. Uh, that's the general concept of the game. There is a storyteller who is kind of running the show. And one of my favorite mechanisms in the game, I wasn't the storyteller. Uh, a guy named Noel was running it, did a fantastic job running the game. Uh, one of the things I thought was interesting is that Noel... While he was the storyteller, he was also playing the game a little bit. Um, he was making decisions, basically. He wasn't just running it. Uh, he, he was, at certain points in the game, he was making decisions that impacted not necessarily the full outcome of the game, but maybe the fate of certain characters. Um, I don't know exactly what he was using to make those decisions, but I think he was basically doing it with the fun of the game in mind, um, which I think is great. A lot of it happened behind the scenes. A few of the other mechanisms that I really like about the game... Um, one, one is obvious. Everybody has their own role, and I thought the roles were really cleverly constructed. And my favorite, I think my favorite among those roles was one, and maybe more that I haven't seen, that had to do with seating position, which I don't think I've seen in a game like this before, where there was a role that said, uh, the play, I think it was the tea, tea lady or, or tea person, tea, yeah, we'll call it the tea lady. The, the people to, uh, that person's left and right, uh, were, oh, I can't even remember the exact role right now, but they mattered. That seating position mattered for that specific role. And I thought that was really clever, especially in a game where in real life, you were probably getting up out of your seats and moving around the room, talking to people, um, and then coming back to those seats, that that position really matters as you play and that you need to come back to that same seat so it matters. I thought that was really clever. Uh, another thing that I really liked is that even though you can die in this game, after you die, you can still participate both uh, socially, you can you can still learn, you can still talk to people, you can learn about um, information they're willing to divulge. You can talk about what you know, given that you were now you were killed, um, and you still get a vote, but only one vote. And so from then on, you have one very important vote to spend when you think it really matters, so that you can still win. I played a character. I was the goon in the game, and one of the things about the goon is that if someone targets me for an ability at the end of the round, I become uh, their affiliation. So I, I either good or bad. That's a, a general way to say it. I, I can become good or bad. The goon is inherently good, though, at the beginning of the game. And so I kind of went into it with the strategy of if I was going to die. Um, I'd rather die good so the good team can win um, rather than have the, the demon win at the end of the game. So I did die, but I died as a good player before someone changed my affiliation. And I still felt like even if my team ha would have won, we didn't win, but if my team would have won, I would have felt like I was still part of that. Um, and I, it was neat having one vote that I could spend when it really mattered late in the game. Um, one other thing, oh, two other things that I really liked. One is that there even though only one player is ever the demon, as far as I can tell, I think there's only one demon. You're trying, the good team is trying to identify that demon and kill that demon. Um, even though there's only, even though there are four different demon options in the game, and maybe even more in the game, only one player uh, is the demon and only one of those roles is occupied. So I really like this in that there, there is a definite bad guy you're trying to go after, but you don't know which of the demons they are. And so part of the deduction of the game is figuring out which... It, if, given that there is a demon out there, which of the demons are they? Which of the four demon or more options are they? And it really actually makes the deduction more difficult because different demons interact with the game in different ways. I thought that was really clever. 
The last thing I want to mention is that I really like the one by one voting in the game. In a lot of games like this, you kind of, when it's time to vote, you say one, two, three, and you all reveal something simultaneously. In Blood on the Clock Tower, um, thematically, you, at least on the online version, there's this clock. And each player, based on their seating position, is a, a position on this clock. And you go around in a circle and count the votes. So you start at a certain point. Uh, I think it's to the to the right of the player or to the left of the player who's um, ha who has been nominated to be voted out. And everyone says yes or no if they're going to vote right away. So you can, when it gets to you, you have some information as to whether or not you should vote. And you can use that information to your benefit. Like if you want to avoid giving something away to the, to the other players, if you want to avoid showing that you are a certain affiliation, you may not have to reveal that because other players may have already jumped on the vote and you don't have to vote or they have not, enough votes haven't come even close to voting the person out and no one expects you to vote. So you don't have to give any, any information about, away but that way. So I really like that though, there's one by one, almost turn-based voting in the game divided by a second or two opposed to everyone voting at the same time. Obviously a lot to like here about uh, a large group bluffing deduction game. I, I did think it was maybe a little long. Um, two hours is a long time for a game of this style, but I've heard in smaller groups it can be closer to like 45 minutes to an hour, which I think would be excellent for this style of game. If you have the chance to play it online, I highly recommend it. Blood on the Clock Tower. I'd love to hear your thoughts if you've played it in the comments below, or if you can think of any of these, these similar mechanisms being applied to other social bluffing deduction games that you really enjoy. I'd love to hear your thoughts there as well. Thanks.